This session is on the quality. We are used to quality in our life and know that quality is a very important issue. If we talk about the quality of a laser beam, it needs quantitative definition. Otherwise, it is no use for our scientific and application-oriented work. How do we quantify quality for laser beams? Therefore, I put together three issues. The definition and the link to the Gaussian beam, the beam parameter product, which is ultimately the definition of the quality and the focusability. And last not least, a few words about real laser beams and the beam quality in the real world of lasers. So if we look at the quantitative derivation of the beam parameter product, we remember from the characteristics of a Gaussian beam that the far field divergence is just the ratio of the beam waist and the Rayleigh length. Other, on the other hand, the Rayleigh length is defined as pi w0 square over lambda. So if you combine these two simple equations, we get an even simpler one, which tells us that the beam waist times the far field divergence is just lambda over pi, a constant. So as a message for a certain laser, the product of the far field divergence angle and the beam by radius is minimum for the Gaussian, Gaussian beam and it depends only on the wavelengths of that corresponding laser. So for a single laser, the beam parameter product is constant throughout all locations of the propagation of a laser beam in whatever optical system we put it into. A consequence is that this product is invariant under propagation and focusing and to give you a little feeling about the numbers, uh, we put together two examples for a CO2 laser and a YAG laser. If we calculate the values, which, as I said, depend only on the wavelengths, we end up with a value of 3 mm milliradians for a CO2 laser at a wavelength of 10 microns. And correspondingly, because it depends only on the wavelengths, one tenth of that value for a neodymium YAG laser which has a wavelength which is only one micron. So the value for the YAG laser is 0.3 millimeter radi radians. The dimension is explained by simply the fact that the millimeter stand for the beam waist and the milliradians for the far field divergence. To make that a little more obvious and illustrated in examples, um, you see here a value W1, beam waist 1, for a laser beam 1 with a corresponding divergence angle theta. Now, if we do some optical conversion, focusing, change of divergence, and we change the beam waist to a value W2, what would you expect happens to the angle of divergence? Well, of course, if the product is constant, this angle will get smaller. So, if we have a smaller divergence, the beam waist will be larger. If we have a higher convergence or divergence, the beam waist will be smaller. By the way, this means if we look for real small foci, we better focus with high convergence or high divergence and high angles of the beam. Then we get small focal radii. If we look at different lasers, with different beam parameter products. So say the wavelengths of lambda 1 is larger than lambda 2. You may think of a YAG laser and a CO2 laser. Then for the same beam waist, the same focal spot size, with the laser of the larger wavelengths, we will need a stronger conversion of the beam. So a higher focusing with a smaller focal lengths of a corresponding lens in comparison to a laser 2 which has a corresponding smaller wavelength. And on the right hand picture you can see the same effect now for constant divergences and it's pretty clear that the laser with the higher wavelengths, lambda 2, will result in a larger spot radius compared to 
the value we get for the laser with the smaller wavelengths, which will result in a smaller focal spot. So, if we want small focal spots, number one, use short wavelengths for high focusability, and number two, use short focal lengths, lengths for high focusing and high divergence in order to get small spot sizes. So I already mentioned that um, you can interpret these two wavelengths as YAG and CO2. However, in this scale, it is not really proportional to the values. If you look at the real values, and remember that the ratio of, of the two wavelengths is about 10, then you realize the effect of changing the wavelengths by a factor of 10. It will result at the same divergence in a focal spot which is a factor of 10 smaller in diameter, which means for the area, the focal area, it will be a factor 10 square smaller, which is a factor of 100. So changing the wavelengths by a factor of 10 results in a factor of 100 higher intensity. That's why YAG lasers are so much more used now as CO2 lasers and the reason why they didn't use, why we didn't use YAG lasers in the beginning is simply because we could not achieve the proper beam quality in earlier days. If we look at a real beam, then we realize that it is not all that nice as we have been discussing it so far. On the left hand side you see, so to say, an ideal Gaussian beam with its classical intensity distribution, with this bell-like shape intensity behavior. On the right-hand side, you see a real beam, which has a very complex shape and uh, is not really that easy to describe. The reason for that is that on the left-hand side, we talk about the best quality ever achievable in the sense of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, so within a very fundamental physical law, we call this the fundamental mode of a Gaussian beam. In reality, we have many of such modes, such possibilities for a laser to radiate, and these modes are all mixed in the right-hand picture and result in the corresponding rather complex intensity distribution. So, if we take a closer look at the reality of multi-modes, let me just give you a little flavor of these modes in the next picture, where you will see for two ge geometries um, the corresponding modes which can appear in a laser. Let me start on the right-hand side. Those are called Laguerre Gaussian modes, and they are for radial symmetry. In the first line, you see very uh, nicely circular rings of different sizes which appear for different modes. So the fundamental mode is the left one, just the spot. Then the mode 1, 0 would be one ring and one center spot. 2, 0, two rings, one center spot, and so on. On the other hand, we don't only have a radial quantization. Actually, this word is really true in this context because it is in the physical limit of the quantization, the optical footprint from what we know from quantum mechanics in quantization. It's the same physical limits that we talk about. And we have, besides the radial quantization, an angular quantization, which you see on the vertical line. So the first angular separation is simply uh, 180 degrees, so we get a split beam, then we have four uh, parts, and then we have six parts, and so on. Then you can combine in the matrix the different modes in the different directions, angular and radial, and you get to very complex shapes. The left-hand side shows actually the same thing for Cartesian coordinates, where we now just have a quantization in X and Y, which is symmetric, and results in the patterns shown there. So the message of that is, in reality, we will have to expect not only the fundamental mode TEM00, as it is called, transversely excited mode uh, 00, 
but we will have higher order modes uh, which we will then see combined in the resulting beam intensity profiles in the real case as shown in the right picture I showed you before. Now if you look at the real beams in comparison with the Gaussian beam with respect to the propagation we of course need to introduce some changes because now we have a less good beam quality so a less good focusability or a higher divergence at these lower quality laser beams and um, on the top left hand side um, you see the equations for a Gaussian beam with respect to the propagation of the beam waste and uh, depending on the optical axis coordinate z shown in the right hand picture the Gaussian beam waste scales for large values of z simply linearly with z for small values you have to take care about the root dependence shown in the equation and the Rayleigh length is defined by pi w0 over lambda the beam parameter product for the Gaussian beam again is just lambda over pi now the question how do we introduce a correction value for higher orders of the modes so less uh, limited beam quality, less best beam quality. So talking about real beams we just introduce a factor m square shown on the lower left of the slide and so the formulas actually remain unchanged but we introduce a factor m square in the denominator of the Rayleigh length and doing this we get a real value of the Rayleigh length compared to the best case of a Gaussian beam which differs actually only by this factor of m square. Maybe best to understand way to put it is listed on the right hand side in the gray box where this m square is defined and m square the factor is simply the ratio of the real beam parameter product with respect to the best beam parameter product which is the Gaussian beam. So depending on how many times worse so to say the real beam is in relation to a best case a theoretical best case that is the number m square and of course m square is always larger than 1. To visualize the uh, effect of a higher m square, we again plotted the type of pictures you've seen before. On the left hand side, the green beam m1 is a larger value, so it is less quality than the red one. And of course, the consequence is if you want to focus the two beams to the same spot size w1 and 2, which is the beam waste then we need to focus with a higher convergence at the less good beam quality m1 and we can afford a lower divergence m2 for m2 with respect to the higher beam quality. So higher beam quality results in less need for focusing to achieve the same focal spot size. And correspondingly, if you have the same divergence, a less quality, a beam of less quality will result in a higher focus radius with respect to a higher uh, beam quality, which will result in a smaller focal spot W0. Finally, on the right hand side, you see what we call the land map the road map of lasers which is a plot of the beam parameter product now the real beam parameter product with respect to the average optical power and of course we want low beam parameter product high beam quality at high power so we want to move to the lower right end corner of this picture and what you see is a number of lasers, diode lasers, fiber lasers, InnoSlab lasers, disc lasers, rod lasers, different wavelengths, different building 
styles of lasers um, which result in different beam qualities and different average powers. So in this map we can now draw the quality of the corresponding laser and show the areas and, di and directions of development for the future. So in summary, we learned that the beam parameter product is a constant value for a single laser beam. It has a limited lower value which is given by a very fundamental physical law, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. In reality we have to realize that with high powers we have higher beam divergences, higher modes and so less beam quality and as a consequence we can map all the real existing lasers. As you can see in this graph that for instance a neodymium YAC laser which as we said has a best beam parameter product at 0.3 millimeter milli radians. That's where it crosses the minimum optical power shown here with a value of 1 watt. If you look at the CO2 laser you see that this crossover is at 3 millimeter radian which is the corresponding beam parameter product for the CO2 laser. And you can see that for increasing laser power the values get less good so that means for small powers we can operate these lasers in fundamental mode in TM00 in the Gaussian beam but with increasing power we have to allow higher modes which then will decrease the beam quality and why this is we will discuss in the corresponding modules on the individual lasers.